the 522F order, this is where, so judgment liens, um, anything recorded against the property, judgment liens are secured creditors uh, and they, because they've now are using your property as collateral. Um, they can be removed as a lien on homestead property under this code. So once again, homestead, super protection under the constitution. Um, if you get a 522F order, basically judgment liens are get kicked off your um, homestead property. The lien must be on Schedule C and D, Schedule D, Schedule C is the exemption, property exemption. So homestead property is going to be listed there. And D is your judgment creditors with um, priority status. So mortgages, judgment creditors. We can't rely on it until the debtor is discharged from bankruptcy. So if it's somewhere during the bankruptcy proceeding, a 522F order is um, done, we can't just say we're good to go. We can ignore this judgment lien. It does not apply to mortgages or tax liens. Right off the bat, property tax liens, property tax, water, sewer, utilities, all of that runs with the property. You can't get rid of it because you've died. You can't get rid of it because of bankruptcy. That stuff has to be paid. So if you have a $30,000 property tax bill, that's not part of the bankruptcy estate. You still need to take care of that. Mortgages do not fall within this order. Mortgages are going to be a separate thing. You still have to pay your mortgage. Um, unless the bankruptcy court gives an order otherwise, and we're gonna talk about that. So notice of appeals, like I said, you have a bankruptcy order. It's subject to a 14 day appeal, any bankruptcy order. Automatically 14 days are going to be added to whatever order there is. And that's for any objections from the, the um, creditors. Their calendar days. So if they fall on a weekend holiday, it goes to the next business day, just like we do with uh, real estate purchase agreements. So that's where we're counting those days to make sure that we're clear to close essentially. So reinvesting in the debtor, court approval, once it happens, so we've got either it's an exempt property, it's abandoned, the plan's approved, uh, the um, debtor's dismissed, or you know one of those things then it's revested in the debtor. So at that point, the court approval is no longer necessary to sell, may still need court approval to mortgage, but real property remains subject to all existing liens and encumbrances. So once it revests in you, doesn't mean it wipes out everything that's on title. That stuff is still on, um, it's still gonna have to be taken care of if the debtor wants to sell the property. We still have to pay off judgment liens, mortgages, things like that. Really important because this is where it gets really confusing and where we on the title on actually argue with bankruptcy attorneys. Discharge is not the same as dismissal. An order of discharge discharges the debtor from the bankruptcy action, but it doesn't dismiss them. It discharges them from the debt. It doesn't close the bankruptcy case, doesn't cause the title to revest in the debtor. When we had our little graph up, remember, ex homestead exemption, abandonment, approval of the plan, or dismissal is when the property vests in the debtor. Discharge just means debtor no longer has to pay whatever debt it is. They aren't dismissed from bankruptcy. And this is where we will get orders of discharge and get arguments from bankruptcy attorneys, from the debtor themselves saying, no, 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 I was discharged. I can do whatever I want with the property. No, you cannot. You have to be dismissed in the bankruptcy transaction. When you are discharged, you may not have to pay money um, for mortgages or liens, just depends on what the bankruptcy court has determined. But the actual lien still attaches to the property. So this is another thing that we get a lot of people arguing with us. No, it says I'm discharged from all debt, including mortgages, including my judgment liens, blah, 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 blah. Great. When we're looking at title, that lien is still attached to the property. There may be zero dollars that you have to pay to it, but we have to get a release of that mortgage, a release of that judgment lien in order to provide clear and marketable title. And this is where we bankruptcy attorneys call and they're like, no, they're good to go. All the debts discharged, you don't need a, dis or a 
you know, release of lien from anyone. And we absolutely do. That is a Florida rule. We have to get a discharge or a release of that lien, even though that debt is gone. It is with anything. When we're doing our title examination, when you send over a purchase agreement, we look, we do public record search. If we're finding old mortgages, all kinds of things that we probably know are paid off, guess what? We still have to get releases of those liens to provide clear and marketable title. That's the exact same thing with this. So that's the tricky piece that we get um, a lot of arguments, like I said, about discharge of debt doesn't mean the lien is off title. So just some things to watch out for. Foreclosure, like I said, um, back in the day, everyone was filing bankruptcies to avoid foreclosure. Uh, bankruptcy courts are a little uh, more suspicious of that now, and there's a bunch of bankruptcy reform. Um, typically, you get that automatic stay, so any foreclosure proceeding is stopped, and then if the bankruptcy court lifts that stay, the foreclosure proceeding can go forward. Preferences, this is really important because bankruptcy courts look for this. This is where the debtor uh, knows they're gonna be filing bankruptcy, or maybe they don't know, but they're starting to like liquidate their assets. I'm gonna give my uh, cousin a $100,000 check so it's no longer in my bank account. I'm gonna do all these things 90 days to one year prior to filing, and that's all to set up so that they have not, no assets, essentially. Bankruptcy court's like, nope, all of that gets pulled back into the bankruptcy estate. Defective mortgages, defective mortgages, um, where you have wrong legals, the execution wrong, acknowledgements wrong, those things, if those, if there's any issues, defects with the mortgage, that mortgage can be taken, be wiped out in the bankruptcy. So when we're looking at it on the title end, we want to make sure that that's a proper, um, properly executed, has the correct legal, all of that, because if it doesn't, that mortgage doesn't exist and a bankruptcy court can just wipe it out. Unrecorded documents are another thing unrecorded deeds, mortgages, things like that. In uh, federal rules, a procedure uh, to avoid, to, um, if your document is not recorded within 20 days of the transaction, it's called, uh, you, or perfected, I should say, but perfection for our purposes recording. Within 20 days, then that document, like I said, that mortgage, whatever it is, no, does not exist because it's not perfected. So these are the things we're on the lookout for, um, but the preferences is probably the big one is where, you know, most people are like, oh, I'm going to avoid uh, having all my assets in this bankruptcy estate. So I'm going to start giving, gifting stuff to certain people or throwing in a trust or a Swiss bank account or whatever they're doing. No, it doesn't work that way. That's going to be brought in. Bankruptcy and your credit score. So under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, a bankruptcy filing can remain on your credit for 10 years after the case is filed. Foreclosure is seven years. And I bring this up because it used to be, um, you know, people would look at a bankruptcy like, oh my God, no, we can't hire this person or whatever. For the most part, bankruptcies are given a lot more forgiveness. If you have a foreclosure, it's a little different story. Um, bankruptcies may stay on your credit report for a little longer, but you can still get mortgages. You can still do a lot of things. Bankruptcies are forgiven a little easier. It doesn't remove it from your credit report, but most people will, um, unless you fi keep filing bankruptcies all the time, if you have one, it's not going to ruin your life. Um, or necessarily your credit score as badly as a foreclosure will. Alternatives to bankruptcy. And this is where there are so many scammers right now that are out there and they're probably gonna, because we work in this industry, you're just gonna see people ramp up on these kind of things. But you've got people that are like, oh, we can consolidate your debt, we can do this, we can, we'll negotiate with your credit cards and blah, 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 blah. Some are legit, legit but some are just, you pay them high fees and they do nothing for you. Um, and you just end up getting in a lot more trouble. There's all kinds of people that say they'll pay off your debt and consolidate and do, there's, it's a huge scam thing. Um, my suggestion is always, if you're not sure to go talk to a bankruptcy attorney and see what your, your, um, alter, your options are. There's out of court settlement with creditors, which a bankruptcy attorney, some will do for you. Uh, there's mortgage modifications. 
you know, if you can't, your mortgage is too high, you're just incurring too much debt, lenders will do mortgage modifications. It's a lengthy process. There, you have to prove hardship, all kinds of things. But if you do, and right now is probably the best time to do it because lenders don't want to go into foreclosure. I'll tell you that much. They'd rather you, we'd work out a system and get you a mortgage modification. And then negotiate a reduction of payments to creditors. And you can do, actually do that yourself. Um, one of the things I get asked is like, when can I file bankruptcy? And then when can the next time can I file bankruptcy? So the rules are chapter seven to a chapter seven, you have to wait eight years. Chapter 13 to a chapter 13, two years. And that's that reorganization plan, but you have to be a, um, you have to have a study job in order to do that. Chapter seven to a chapter 13, it's four years. And then chapter 13 to chapter seven is six years.